What is the story, Morning Glory? What is the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review, this circus that is Seeking Sister Wife. So I had watched uh, the previous seasons of Seeking Sister Wife during the quarantine, and I think I had I binge watched all the seasons up to season three. And when season three ended, I felt so empty, and I felt like I needed more and more and more of this trashy, absolute garbage reality TV. Could not get enough of it. So when season four came about, I was so so freaking happy. But here we are. So season four, episode one, who doesn't like thirds? Let's start off with the Davis family. First of all, I want to mention um, in this first episode, we have three families and two of the families, the men are constantly adding, not constantly, but the men's, the wives that the men are adding to the dynamic are getting younger and younger. For example, with the Davis family, we have Nick, the husband, his first wife, April 38, second wife, Jennifer, 24, potential third wife, 21. And then we also have the Foley family, Steve, 42, uh, kind of sort of first wife, really second, Brenda, 38, and newest wife, April, 21 years old. So they're just getting younger and younger models of the older version. And I think it's hilarious. So the Davis family, let's start off with them. So Nick has been interested in plural relationships for about 15 years. And he met April, his first wife because I understand that they're not all legally married some are legally married others are not but whatever the situation is you cannot have more than one legal spouse on paper so when I use the term wives or wife it's just for the sake of argument you know instead of calling them the new addition the new girlfriend the new friend the new pretend wife I'm just going to say wife even though technically they're not some of them are not legal spouses so April and Nick met in college and they were together for 14 years. Jennifer's, uh, this is Jennifer's first poly polygamous relationship. Now Jennifer is the second wife that joined the family. First we had Nick and April and then they added in Jennifer. Jennifer's 24 years old. So Jennifer has been with them for about four to five years, which meant, means that when they met, she was about 19, 20 years old. So she's been with April and Nick for about four to five years and Jennifer says this is the youngest wife she said that Nick makes her feel beautiful courageous and fearless which makes me wonder so you wouldn't have felt this way without Nick um you didn't feel this way about yourself at all okay so April the 36 year old wife and Jennifer the 24 year old wife um they're actually legally married to one another and the reason why they did this is because I think Nick explained it he didn't want one wife to feel left out or jealous if he was legally married to one of them since he could only be legally married to one of them so the two wives married each other and then they legally changed their last names to Nick's last name to I guess show you know unity of a family um, April, the 36 year old wife says that she has been ostracized by almost everyone she knows because nobody agrees with her lifestyle. And she says she is perfectly fine with that. She's happy with Nick and Jennifer and she wouldn't have it any other way. They all share one bed and they, the two women claim that they have never spent a night without Nick. As far as the intimacy department, they're all compatible in that area. No one's complaining about anything as far as like, I guess, you know, time spent or performance or whatever. Everyone is uh, pretty much satisfied. Now, April, the older wife, the 36 year old wife, when she came into this situation with Nick, she already had a child from a previous relationship. Her son at the time, uh, he was about six months old. So if they've been together for about 14 years, uh, he, her son now must be about 14, 15 years old, somewhere around there. So Nick has taken on the role of stepfather to April's son. And they say that the son is okay with this because this is all he's ever known. And his friends and the the younger kids that he's associated with, they 
all have non-traditional type of families. For example, they're raised by grandparents or raised by aunts and uncles. So him being raised by his stepdad and his bonus mom, it's nothing unusual to anybody that he knows. And so I guess they're trying to let us know that the, that the child, the, the teenager is perfectly comfortable with this entire arrangement. Now, This is when it got interesting for me when Nick said that um, he doesn't work. The two women work. And I was just like, okay, um, that's interesting. Um, Okay. I have a lot to say about that. For example, like my under, okay. My understanding of these polygamous relationships is that, you know, the women like it, the women are drawn to it because it gives them a sense of, um, being, they feel like they are provided for the men take care of their families. The women take care of the children in the household because in a traditional polygamous type of relationship or dynamic, um, there's a lot of children. And in a traditional polygamous relationship, it's all based in religion. Um, These people are following some tenement of the Christian Bible where it talks about, I think it's in the Old Testament where, you know, God did not frown upon a man having multiple wives and multiple families, being fruitful, multiplying, all that stuff was perfectly okay. I don't know if things changed in the New Testament about that, but definitely it was upheld in the Old Testament. And so the traditional idea of polygamy is based in religion and the man is the provider and the women because there's a whole bunch of them will stay home and they will take care of the home and take care of the children while the man goes outside and works and provides so the polygamists in this show their reasoning for wanting to be in a polyamorous or polygamous relationship i think it's more so polyamorous uh but anyways their, their idea of being in a polygamous relationship has got nothing to do with religion has got nothing to do with the bible It's just something they want to do. Okay. But in a traditional polygamous relationship, the women are okay with it because the women are provided for, you know, they don't have to go out there and work. You know, they can stay home and take care of their children and the children of their sister wives. But what is attractive about being with a man who doesn't work, but has multiple women? What is the incentive for the woman? That's what I don't understand. So whatever the two women work, they're happy. They like it. So, you know, I love it. So the two women work and, um, Nick says that he is a stay at home dad. And I'm asking myself a stay at home dad to who, because his stepson, April's son is about 14, 15 years old. So he's almost fully cooked. He's probably in school most of the day, whether it's online or, um, in a, physical classroom he's in school most of the day and I'm pretty sure when he's not in school he's either on some computer gaming or he's running around with his friends who are you being a stay-at-home father to stop using that term to justify I'm just gonna go out and say it stop using that term to justify your laziness Nick you just don't want to work and you found the perfect plan of having you know your wives work for you and take care of you you don't have to do much of anything So you're not at home changing diapers, bottle feeding, you know, burping babies, dealing with, you know, colicky babies, running after toddlers, trying to entertain a whole bunch of children. That's not what you're doing. You're chilling at home watching TV or like you want us to believe reading a whole bunch of books because Nick likes to show off his um, his intelligence by just spouting out spouting out um, quantum physics for no reason. Um, so yeah, you found the perfect plan. You found the perfect plan. You know, you're being taken care of. You have multiple incomes coming into your home. You don't have to do much of anything. You don't even have to take care of a kid. You're just there chilling. 
whatever. So he compares himself to the king in a game of chess. He says, you know, I'm like the king in chess, you know, where the king, he can only move one square at a time in any direction. He can barely move on the board. Whereas the queens, you know, they're all over the board. They can move anywhere they want, do whatever they want. So he likens his situation to that, which just, I'm like, what, what's the positivity in that? You like, you feel good having to be protected by your two, because in the game of chess, a lot of the times the queen is constantly defending her king, you know, constantly protecting him. So this is your idea. You know what? If you like it, Nick, like I said, I love it. I love it a lot. I love it a whole bunch. Um, you like being protected by your women, have been provided by your women. I get it. It's fine. <laughs> so April is very grateful that, you know, Nick is an intellectual and he's a thinker and that he stays at home and reads all day. She finds that extremely attractive. Now, would you find it more attractive if he was all of that plus earning an income, April? Would that make him even more attractive or the idea of Nick working completely disgusts you? I don't know. Both women, Jennifer and April, are extremely grateful for Nick. They love him so much. They're constantly singing his praises to him, constantly singing their praises, praises to each other. It's just one big old uh, love fest in the Davis household. So they're actually seeking a third wife. And um, they're currently dating a young woman by the name of Danielle, who was 22 years old, that they met through a dating app. And um, supposedly, even though she's really, really young, they claim that she has a very old soul. Now, Nick is going to be going on his very first one on one date with Danielle. And he's excited and he's nervous and he's really looking forward to, uh, you know, spending this quality time with her. And the one thing that he made it a point to clarify is that no hanky panky is going to be going on on the first date and on, on the, in the initial date. Um, until I guess they feel more comfortable with each other. I wonder if it's going to be happening like on the second date. So stop acting like, you know, you're some type of more, uh, you know, high moral, uh, saint, you know, you're going to be, uh, refraining for a very, very long time. Okay. Maybe not the first date, but you know, you're probably going to get a taste of something on the second date. So on his date with Danielle, we meet Danielle. Danielle is adorable. Okay. She's, I felt, I felt like she was adorable. Um, I thought she was cute. I thought she had like a really cute personality. Um, she has never been in a polyamorous type of relationship before. I think the difference between polyamorous and polygamy is that polygamy is, I could be wrong. It could be Polygamy specifically could be about one man, multiple women, and polyamorous just means a whole bunch of people loving each other, not necessarily one gender with a bunch of, you know, with the same, with, with the opposite genders. It's just whatever goes, whatever comes through the door, we're all going to love on each other, man, woman, five women, six men, whatever. That's polyamorous. And polygamy is like we have one centralized figure with multiple spouses around. So... Nick says that Danielle gives him butterflies and he's just like so giddy and just so smitten by her. And um, his only concern with Danielle is whether or not she's going because of her age and her being so young and maybe even unfamiliar with polygamy. His only concern with her is that is she going to be committed to this dynamic and not get bored, you know, after six months, a year or whatever, and then skip out. So he really wants her to understand while they're having dinner. He tells her, you know, how important it is to be committed to the situation, to fully understand what you're getting yourself into so that when you make that decision, you make that decision to stay. So, um, so he gives her the what's up, the rundown of what they're trying to do. And, um, that's where that situation ended. So we don't know if it's going to be a yay or a nay for Danielle and, um, whether or not she's ready to commit to this polygamous dynamic. So that's Nick. I kind of feel like Nick is like, um, a brainwasher. Um, he's just, <laughs> I don't the true the like the true core values of polygamy i don't think he's about any of that i think that nick just wants to have a whole bunch of women and he's convinced these women that this is the way to go with him and um nick is likable you know he's a likable fella 
you know, there's nothing really wrong with him personally, but I, I'm just, I just get this feeling that look, he just wants to have a whole bunch of women around him and, you know, have his, just to have a whole bunch of women around him. I don't know how else to say, how else to say, how else to say it or how else to put it. He just found a way to get a whole bunch of women and not worry about cheating on anybody, get as many women as he wants, and he doesn't have to work. And he stays at home and does whatever the hell he wants while the women go out making money for him. It's sort of like pimpish in a way. Anyways, moving on to the Merrifield family. Now, Merrifield family, I'm very familiar with them because I watched, you know, their entire season. And um, my impression of them initially before I saw season four, my impression of the Merrifield family when they did the whole thing about going to, I think they met Roberta. Roberta is from Brazil. Um but they had traveled to meet her in Mexico. I'm not sure why they didn't travel to meet her in Brazil, but they met her in Mexico. She couldn't come into the United States because she didn't have, you know, her papers. So they met her in Mexico and Danielle, the first wife, showed a lot of jealousy towards the relationship between Garrick and Roberta. Um, I do remember that. And it felt like, it seemed like she just, this wasn't for her, even though she claimed that she did like living this lifestyle it just seemed like she was really struggling with how close or how quickly Garrick and Roberta bonded that's what it seemed like to me so I'm surprised that she came back for round two um Danielle and Garrick are back Roberta is still in the picture um and now they are adding a third wife to the mix now I have a lot to say about Danielle but I'll get to her as we go along so they're from Buena Vista Colorado they've been together Danielle and Garrick have been together for 15 years and they dated uh they've been dating plural for about four years they have two sons together 12 and 13 years old and they say the kids are okay with polygamy because it's more Christmas presents for them that's a really crazy way of minimizing this whole situation, but that's what they said. So they compared polygamy to God loving all of his creatures, all of his people, whatever. They try to connect it to some religious, they try to tie it in with religion. And it was just like, whatever, y'all, are, you know, whatever, just stop. Okay, just stop. Stop trying to justify this through religion. Um, Garrick... <laughs> I also feel like Garrick, I feel the same way about him as I do about Nick. You just, you know, you want to be, I don't have an issue with polygamy or polyamorous relationships. I don't have an issue with that at all. As long as all everybody involved is doing this with 100% consent, no one is being forced or pressured or threatened into this. Everybody is of legal consenting age, at least 18 years or older. Um, I would prefer to be 21 and up, but whatever. Um, yeah, do what you want to do. Fine. If you're going to have a whole bunch of kids, fine. Take care of your kids. Be responsible for your kids. Fine. I don't have an issue with this at all. But my issue is don't try to feed me BS. <laughs> Just don't do that. Don't try to feed me BS because the words are not matching the actions. Like you're tying this into God. Now, I think Garrick and Danielle were probably... No, they weren't the most religious. There was another couple in the previous seasons that were more religious than, than them. But in this particular episode, it seems like Garrick and Danielle are probably the most religious, and they're not even really that religious. And the reason why I say that is because he tried to connect or he tried to justify his lifestyle with uh, whatever he read in the Bible. You know, God loving all his creatures and he sees himself. I guess he's kind of comparing himself to God, you know, how he's loving all of his wives. I don't know. But just don't you like to be with a whole bunch of different women and the women that you've chosen are OK with that. For whatever reason, they're fine with that. I don't even know if Danielle is really fine with that because she really struggled with jealousy uh, when she saw Roberta and Garrick together. And especially when she found out that they had been intimate, she almost lost her mind. So I'm just like, Danielle, I don't understand you at all. I cannot figure you out at all how you struggled so much. You were crying and boohooing on the beach in Mexico because Garrick and Roberta were so close and they were, you know, uh, knocking boots in the hotel room and it really bothered you, but you're back for more. Okay. So let's move on. So Garrick said that his family completely disowned him when they had discovered or when he announced to them that he was going to live a polygamous lifestyle. Um, so he has no contact with them. It seems like now Roberta is the sister wife that is living in Brazil and they met her three years ago. And 
in order for her to come into the United States, Garrick and Danielle actually had to file a legal divorce so that Garrick can get, can get married to Roberta and get her over to the United States on a spousal visa. That was like the only way. Now I could not believe when I watched that season that Danielle was willing to legally divorce her husband just so that he could bring in a third party to their, to their marriage. That blew my mind. That absolutely blew my mind. I was like, girl, you are committed to this more than what meets the eye because you're willing to sacrifice yourself, your legal protection for him getting with this Brazilian woman just to get her over into the United States. And you are struggling with jealousy issues. Girl, you are doing the most. So I don't know if it's because for the love of Garrick or for the love of this lifestyle, but there's no way that I would give up my legal protection. I'd be like, you know what? We can find a plethora of women right here in the United States because I'm not going to get a divorce and give up my legal protection. And, you know, for you, no, I wouldn't do that. I would not do that. But she did it and she did it willingly. So, like I said before, Daniel really struggled with jealousy in the beginning. Uh, Danielle tells us now that she has been praying and fasting to get rid of her jealous feelings. I wonder what BS she's feeding herself in order to no longer feel jealous. I think right now she's okay with it because Roberta and Garrick are not really together because Roberta st she's still in Brazil now she's in Brazil because her mother's ill she got her papers she got her visa she can come into the United States legally but she stays she stayed in Brazil because um, her mother is sick so right now you know Danielle is feeling really confident she's like all giddy and happy because Roberta is not in the picture right now so she doesn't have to see her husband of 15 years ogling another woman, you know, lusting after another female. It's not going to be all up in her face. Let's just wait and see what's going to happen when Roberta arrives. So they had a commitment ceremony, the three of them back in Mexico. Of course, it was nothing legal. It was just like a, a little formal or informal ceremony to be committed to one another. And, um, they haven't seen Roberta in over a year. And, um, they talk about children with Roberta. Uh, they're, they, Garrick and Danielle are both in agreement with Roberta and Garrick having kids. And that's really important to them to expand their family. That's something that they really want to do. And they're also building a bigger home to accommodate everybody. And on this property is going to be their bigger house that they're building. And Danielle's parents are going to be living next door. So Danielle's parents are obviously, you know, supportive of this polygamous lifestyle. So it was actually Danielle herself, the woman who struggled with one other woman in her marriage. She's the one that suggested that Garrett get a third wife. And I feel like she has an ulterior motive for that. Um, so she was the one that suggested that Garrett get a third wife. And she says that when Garrick and Roberta are together, she needed someone to be on her side and to like be her support system. And that's why she suggested a third wife. They brought this idea to Roberta. Roberta really wasn't having it because she wanted to be settled in the United States before a third wife is brought into the picture. Now, Roberta is suffering with feelings of jealousy because Garrick is going to be adding on another woman before her and Garrick, you know, really hit the ground, you know, before they can really get started on, on anything because their relationship has been like a vacation relationship. You know, they went to Mexico, had a good time, drank a whole bunch of tequila, you know, slept together had a wonderful time. So she wants to like fully be in a relationship first with Garrick, you know, the everyday real deal, holy feel type of relationship and life with Garrick before adding another woman in. But Roberta is like, bump all that. We're going to add her in right now. Um, she needs her support system right now, which I don't understand. I don't understand why they just don't wait until Roberta comes in so they can figure out if this is even going to work out with Roberta, let alone with Roberta, Roberta and another female. I think they should have just waited for her to come. I don't know what the rush is, but whatever. I think this is where I'm going to say, I feel like Danielle wanted to sabotage 
the relationship between Garrick and Roberta. She was really feeling some type of way about that relationship. And I think this was her way of sabotaging it. And Garrick isn't going to say no with adding another female into his life, into his bed. He's not going to deny that. So if his main wife is okay with it, you know, he's like, hell yeah, bring in another woman. So there was no one to resist this idea or to go against this idea. So Danielle says that she's not expecting her jealousy uh, to come back. I don't know why she's not expecting that because for like a year or so, it's just been her, her and Garrick. Yeah, you feel really confident now until you see your husband tonguing down another woman right in front of your face. Anyways, moving on. So they're all, they are already courting a third wife. Her name is Leah and she's from California. She's a beautiful African-American woman that they met on social media. Um, Danielle says uh, that Garrick was attracted to her like right away. He was very attracted to her as soon as he saw her practically. And Garrick was like, yeah, she's very artistic. Really, Garrick? That's what you, you were attracted to her artistic side? Gotcha. So Leah is a nurse. I didn't get down how old she was, but she's a nurse. She also has one son. Leah herself has been in a polygamous relationship when she had her son, but it did not work out. So she, but that's what she wants. She wants to pursue a polygamous lifestyle. So I feel like, so they talk about, um, not I feel like, but they themselves, Garrick and Roberta, Danielle, especially Danielle. Danielle loves mentioning how jealous Roberta is going to be because uh, she says that Roberta is already jealous of Leah coming into the picture. Um, she, throughout the whole segment, Danielle is constantly bringing up, oh, Roberta's jealous. Oh, Roberta's going to be so jealous. As if she's relishing in the idea of Roberta struggling with a third rough, like she wants to see Roberta going through what she herself went through, I guess, to kind of let Roberta know, look, no matter how strong your bond with Garrick, you, no matter how strong you thought your bond with Garrick was, we'll see how strong it really is when we add in a whole nother female into the picture. I don't know if she felt like she felt like Roberta was too comfortable in her position as a second wife. And so she kind of wants to shake things up a little bit to let Roberta know you can never be too comfortable. You're going to be sitting exactly where I'm sitting one day when a third, fourth and fifth wife come into the picture. I don't know. But I got the feeling that Danielle is trying to sabotage Roberta and Garrick's relationship and that she like enjoys the idea of Roberta struggling with accepting a third wife into the mix. So they go to um, California to meet Leah. Um, Danielle seems to be way more excited about meeting Leah than Garrick. And this is how it was with Roberta. Uh, Danielle was way, really excited to meet Roberta, wanted to welcome her in right away. And as soon as all of this happened, boom, she got hit, you know, with the ugly side of the jealous belt. Now, here she is again, overly excited about this new woman in, into the picture. And we'll just see how things go. So Roberta wanted to come. Okay, so I talked about that. So Garrick thought that um, when they met Leah, uh, before they actually met her, Garrick's only issue with Leah was her height. He was like, he really wanted to know exactly how tall she was because Danielle tells us that Garrick um, has, a, has, an, has an issue with women who are taller than him. So when they finally met Leah at the airport, I think, was it the airport? I don't know where they were at. When they finally met her, um, Garrick thought that she was pretty, but he did felt like she was a little bit too tall. She wasn't necessarily taller than him, but it seemed like she was almost his height. And he kind of struggled with that. I'm not sure exactly why. So Leah thought that Garrick was cute. She thought he was attractive. No issues there. And she tells us that her own parents were polygamists and she grew up in a polygamist household. And she says that she's doing this polygamy lifestyle more for like her own personal reasons. She just likes it. You know, she just likes the lifestyle. It's got nothing to do with religion, nothing to do with the Bible. She just lo wants to be in a plural relationship. And um, Danielle also wants to talk. No, not Danielle wants Leah and Roberta to talk like immediately. Like they're not even, they haven't even pulled away from the, uh, from the parking lot or wherever they were at when they met Leah. Danielle was like, do you want to, sh should we call Roberta? Let's call Roberta. Like she just cannot wait for Roberta to 
meet Leah because it's almost like she just can't wait to break this woman's heart. I could be reading this completely wrong, but that's the feeling that I got when I was watching Danielle. It's like she just really... I don't know, once Roberta to feel some type of pain or some type of, I don't know. It was just really strange and weird um, how she kept on bringing up Roberta's jealousy and how she couldn't wait to get Roberta on the phone to meet Leah. Um, it was like she just couldn't wait to see Roberta be in the position that she was in one or two years previously. So that's the weird Davis family. Okay, and I say weird because Danielle struggled with the relationship between Roberta and Garrick, but then she still wants to add more women into her marriage. I just, I, I just don't get it. Moving on from that. Now we have the Foley family. Now this was interesting as hell. So the Foley family consists of Steve, the husband, 42, Brenda, 38, and the newest addition to the marriage, April, 21 years old. They're from East Texas. Steve said that he never thought he would ever live in a polygamous lifestyle, even though he grew up LDS. He said that in the LDS community, uh, polygamy is not like some widely accepted type of thing. It's only for the very few. I don't know if he said for the very extreme LDS members, but for the majority of them, they don't go for the whole polygamy lifestyle. So he never thought he would be in one, but here he is. So um, he considers polygamy as a way to build a strong family with a strong foundation. You get more love, more support, more help, and it's definitely more fun. Um, okay. More love, more support, and more help. I don't see any children. I mean, his he does have kids, but his kids are teenagers. More help for what? Like money? Like I don't understand. There's not like a whole bunch of... Maybe there's no children yet. Okay, maybe that's what it is. So... Brenda and Steve met eight years ago, and when they met, Steve was already married. He was already in a traditional marriage with his wife, and they came across Brenda. Steve found her attractive, so he approached her. They get to talking, and when he approached Brenda, he was with his wife, and so Brenda was kind of like, okay, this guy is, you know, trying to hit on me, but he's like literally with his wife. What's up with this? But anyways, they all form a friendship, all three of them. The friendship leads on to something more. And then one day they all realize, you know, we're actually like dating. All three of us are like in a romantic relationship. This is more than just friendship. And so they go with the flow, like in this polyamorous type of situation until Brenda just cannot take the pressure from, I guess, her friends and family and society in general I don't know uh, there was a lot of naysayers around them people who really criticized their lifestyle and it was just too much for Steve's wife his first wife who she's not mentioned her name is not mentioned and anytime they show pictures of her she's completely blurred out so the first wife couldn't take the pressure from the outside so she ended up leaving the marriage altogether so then we just have Brenda and Steve now my opinion of Brenda and Steve is that they Brenda is really smitten by Steve. I think that she, she really, really, really loves this guy. And I'm pretty sure he feels the same about her. But I feel like, I feel like if she had it her way, she wouldn't want to be in a polygamous type of relationship. That's the feeling that I get from, from Brenda. So they're courting April, who was 21 years old. They met her through social media. And um, the producers ask April, how do you feel about him? And she instantly starts blushing and giggling. So I guess she really likes him. Steve is an attractive guy. He is a very attractive guy. He's 42 years old. He takes care of himself. He's very fit. He's always taking off his shirt, showing off his body. We know what you're doing, Steve. And he has a nice face. I mean, everything about Steve is attractive. So I can totally understand why Brenda is like head over heels in love with him. Why April finds him very, very attractive. I totally get it. Um, so... Brenda says that the age difference kind of worries her because, you know, April is so young, you know, 21 years old. She's really, really young. And it's kind of making her feel a little bit insecure because she's like, well, I'm going to be getting older. You know, my looks are going to fade and he's still going to have this, you know, really young um, woman in his life. And Brent and uh, Steve tries to like reassure her like, oh, my God, you know, you're always going to be beautiful. You're not your beauty's not going to fade. You're going to age gracefully. And she's like, well, I'm not aging yet. But when I do start aging, I don't know what I'm going to be. So she's like very insecure about this whole situation. And this is the reason why I feel like maybe she's really not 
into this lifestyle as much as he is. But maybe because she's so in love with him or she's like so attracted to him that she doesn't want to let him go. You know, I don't know. But if I felt insecure, if I, if another female made me feel insecure and she was going to be in my marriage and with my husband, I'm going to tell him, I don't want to do this, get rid of her. And if he refused to that, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm not going to be suffering through, uh, any type of moment of insecurity at all. Absolutely not. I'm not going to do that. There are too many, too many men in this world for me to go through any kind of negativity and securities feeling less than some, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And it's okay. If you don't feel that confident about yourself compared to someone else, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's only human when you feel like someone younger and prettier, uh, or somebody richer, somebody more, whatever comes into the fold. And you're going to be sharing a lot of, you know, intimacy with them as far as sharing your husband, sharing your home, you know, your personal space face with this person. And if I'm going to live like that, I'm going to be a thousand percent comfortable and confident. If I feel the slightest bit of insecurity, I'm out. I am out of there. I'm not going to try to coach myself and train myself into feeling better about the situation. I would leave. So I feel like Brenda is going to struggle with jealousy um, when they finally get things going with April. I feel like she's going to be struggling with that. And also Brenda says that her and April don't really have a very deep connection, which is, I think is very, very, very important in a polygamous relationship for the sister wives to feel a bond with one another, to feel um some type of a friendship and closeness and sisterhood with one another, because I think that's the only way that you can really combat the jealousy is when you're like, okay, we're sisters, we're in this together, we're going to form a united front. Uh, we understand what the deal is with this man. And um, we're going to support each other. You need that. If you don't have that with your sister wife, then what is the point of doing any of this? Because one of the reasons is this is going to be your sister. You're going to have to have that very close familial bond with these other women. Otherwise, what's the point of living with a woman that you don't get along with, that you're probably jealous of, makes you feel insecure. What is the point of living that kind of a lifestyle, regardless of how good looking the man is, how wealthy he is, how much of a provider he is, bump all of that. I am not living with someone who's going to make me feel any less than happy, confident, whatever. I'm not doing it. So, uh, Brenda, you're going to have to start bonding with this girl, April, you know, go out shopping, go get your hair done, nails and whatever women do to bond, do all of that, do whatever you got to do, uh, to make sure that you really feel, and maybe cause she's 38 and April is 21. She's kind of like, Oh, I don't have anything really in common with her. You know, I'm more than 10 years older than her, damn near 20 years older than her. Like what the hell am I going to do with a 21 year old BFF? Like really seriously. And I don't understand why the men can't find women who are similar in age. At least that might help the bonding process with the women. I don't know. And like I said, there's not a lot of talk about expanding families other than uh with uh the Merrifields there wasn't a lot of talk about having more children and expanding I don't think it's necessary if you're not going to be doing it for religious reasons you know having more kids and all of that maybe it's not important it's not important um I need to stop thinking of the traditional polygamy and get on board with this new age polygamy where you just do it just to do it yeah that is my review of Seeking Sister Wife season four episode one if you made it this far i appreciate it rate the video on your way out if you like this content subscribe if you don't don't worry about it thank you for stopping by anyway and i'll definitely talk to you later